Hello, my name is Julian, and in this video, we're going to take you through a step-by-step -step guide of how you can create user personas for your projects. In our previous video, which I'll put a link to up above, we spoke about a number of techniques you could use when it comes to user research with the goal to help you identify the challenges and problems your user might face. Now we are going to show you how you can use that knowledge to present a concise version of the research findings for people involved in the project through the creation of an ideal user or persona. So why do we use personas? Well, this approach allows the project team and stakeholders to understand the issues around a problem in a human way. It personalizes the problem and encourages understanding and empathy. It is an important moment in a project as it can often be the only opportunity to meet the real people they're going to try and help. Due to this importance, we must make personas that are as real world as possible and as detailed as possible and is built from your research. So why personas instead of demographic data? While we can definitely use demographics and other data to help refine decisions and make choices, they shouldn't be the only thing we use. I'll give you an example. So through demographics, we can identify a type of person from this information. Any guesses? Yeah, that's right, our recently crowned King Charles. Simple answer is that it also fits for Ozzy Osbourne, which I hope highlights why we don't use just demographics, as they often are only half the story, and we really need the real-world understanding gained from design research to get a genuine understanding of their needs. So what are personas? Well, we can build initial lo-fi versions of personas to identify what we don't know, but longer term personas shouldn't be low on detail and shouldn't be filled up with fictional gaps. If you're unsure, leave it blank. If we don't, then we begin to build personas that become generic or even worse, caricatures of the people we are trying to help, which can make a project team come to incorrect conclusions about the user's needs and requirements. So I hope you're enjoying the video. Do drop us a like and let us know in the comments about your experience of using personas. Did they help your project? Did they make it worse? And if you're liking the videos in general, then do consider subscribing. It really helps us out. In a previous video, we gave a quick overview of the four main persona types. This time we will run through these in a little more detail to help you make a decision as to the type of persona you might need to use for your personal circumstances. So, persona type one, engaging personas. If you've ever come across a persona before, it's likely it fell into this category, as it's probably the most common. As the name suggests, it's designed to be more engaging by detailing as much real world information as possible. Routines, hobbies, interests, backgrounds, and emotions can all be included to create a fully realized 3D rendering of a user. The idea is to make a persona that feels real to any team member it's shared with, making them more likely to not only remember the user, but also to understand and potentially even empathize with them. So they begin seeing the user as someone they're working to deliver for. These personas aren't the best fit for all projects, as they contain so much information about a user that when we try to apply this to a problem, their sheer complexity can make it unclear as to the direction we should go. Therefore, some projects or team members might benefit from a persona that focuses more on concrete data and statistics instead of emotions. Persona type number two, role-based personas. Role-based personas focus on a role a person plays in their organization. These personas should still feel like a real person, but contain less personal information and more details about the user's role, such as a description of their role, who it impacts, and what its business objectives are. Role-based personas should be supplemented with other data wherever possible. For example, it could be useful to explain what percentage of users have this role within the organization, their average technical proficiency, or their market share. This means role-based personas are more data-driven and need to be created from both qualitative and quantitative research. Each role captured from research should be translated into its own persona. This can result in a number of personas being created. These personas are useful to organizations whose decisions are informed by the roles of the people they deal with. They can also be useful tools where buy-in requires hard evidence. Number three, fictional personas. Unlike the previous types, these personas are not created from user research. 
fictional personas are created from assumptions or anecdotal evidence from previous interactions with users. These could be used to give your project team a quick sketch of users, but you should try to limit the information they contain to safe assumptions only. They will always be the most inaccurate of the four persona types and therefore can be the least helpful. Even when erring on the side of caution, it's not recommended that these are used as a guide for your product or service. However, they are good to use right at the beginning of the project, as this initial exercise of creating a persona can reveal gaps of knowledge, which highlights the need for user research and is the first step in thinking about the types of information we need to collect from that user. These personas are best treated as hypothetical or provisional, because while they're a good starting point, they would ideally evolve into more detailed personas as user research has been completed. Number four, objective-based personas. The final persona only concerns itself with the needs or goals of a user. It sits somewhere between the engaging and role-based persona. Objective personas contain details about a person when they are interacting with your product or service. This could be what a person is trying to do, the technology they are using, or the time they have available. These personas are perfect if your design research has centered around understanding your customer current experience of your service or product. Similar to engaging personas, emotions can be included, but with a key difference. Objective personas only contain the user's emotions when engaging with your product or service. Design research is again a good source for this type of persona, but because of its limited scope, it requires less information than engaging personas. You might find that the right type of persona for your project is a hybrid of these. Don't worry about sticking to any one type. You could create a persona that details the needs of a user, so objective, but also includes some personal details, engaging, and statistics from research, so role-based. You can also create as many personas as you need for your project, and they don't all have to be the same type. If the project scope or budget means that catering for all of these personas is not an option, or if some personas contradict each other, you can choose which users are prioritized and work to meet their needs. So now we know the what and why, let's start making the how. We are basing this persona on a recent project we worked on where we were developing a brand for an organization that provided artists with support through funding and resources. During our acclimatization workshop with the customer, we built initial fictional personas based on their experience of their customers. We identified some general information of where these people lived, how old they were, and how they had interacted with them previously. Some of the managers knew these people on an individual basis, and we were able to add further to the fictional persona. From here, it became clear that we didn't really know enough about their customers and needed to go deeper. So to do this, we worked with the organization to run a series of interviews with artists. These interviews firstly allowed us to fill in and refine some areas of their general bio, meaning an accurate age, more context as to how they lived included their interests, plus some information about their preferred communication channels and brands they purchased. We have reduced some of these sections for the video, but feel free to make this as detailed as possible and if you're struggling with it, step back and think how you would describe this person to a friend or colleague. Once we had a rich bio of the person, we moved on to their goals and problems they had specifically when interacting with the organization. They had quite specific objectives, one which the organization knew about, access to funding, but through the interview it became clear that one of the main issues they wanted help with is guidance on how they might become a more sustainable company through new business models and new revenue streams. The reason they needed this because of their main problem, which they identified as project funding. While they were happy to receive funding for a particular piece of work, it made it almost impossible for them to grow their company. So they were really looking to see how they might improve their business longer term. Remember, this section can include very specific and broad information, and don't ignore their more general emotional needs and desires. From here, we built on the persona further, this time by adding more context to the user for the organization. The role section gives us an opportunity to understand how important this user is to the organization. This is normally done through additional research. In this case, we found that around 30% of the artists wrote their own applications and were also responsible for their organization's business development. And around 50% of the artists in this role were looking to gain an understanding as to how they might become more financially sustainable 
as an organization. So as you can see, we've built from an initial fictional persona. We have then carried out design research to explore the individual, which has made them real and engaging. And we have built this out further to cover their objectives and goals. Finally, we have then looked at the data to understand how important this type of person is to the organization. As mentioned before, we've shortened some of these processes down a little just to get them into a reasonable length of video. But hopefully we have managed to explain how you can create engaging user personas for your projects through research. Do let us know what you think in the comments below. Have you used some of these techniques? How did it go? Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.